Okay, I'm out here at this tree. I'm gonna do some uh, kind of instructional stuff here, but the first thing I wanna do is show you how to hook up a tree tether. Tree tether has a relatively big loop on the end. So when you take a tree tether, the standard way people are hooking up this tree tether is they're wrapping it around the tree and then you take all, you take your carabiner, which is typically gonna be on a Prusik knot. I happen to have mine on a rope man. And you run your Prusik knot carabiner through. And then when you're up on your steps or on your platform, you pull this up at about forehead to eye height. And that's how you tighten it. You just wrap it around the tree, run the stuff through and pull it down. And now you've got your carabiner here and it's adjustable on the rope man you can go up or down just by sliding it and on the prusik you can slide it up or down as well but the way i like to hook mine up it just stays in place better because when you just have that loop and you're on a really smooth bark tree and you lift your weight up out of the seat to make some adjustments or to do something whatever and you find yourself doing that once in a while when you're just moving around changing your seating position on a two panel saddle you're adjusting your seat making it a little deeper, a little shallower for whatever the hunting condition calls for. You can't do that with a single panel. But this is the way I like to hook it up. Basically, bring it up here, take the loop, stick your hand through the loop, grab the rope, and pull the rope through. So now what you've got is basically you've got your loop with the rope pulled through it. Take your stuff, Run it through that bigger loop there. Bring it around. And now when you cinch it up, you've got a girth hitch knot. And that girth hitch is a lot stronger. It's gonna stay in position. It's not gonna slide up because it's not just a big loop with a rope running through it. As you can see, that doesn't move very easy. And you can tighten that up however you want it. Uh, and I was watching a video this morning, and it was a really nice video about tree stands versus, uh, versus saddles. And one thing that I noticed he did is he was sitting in a position on this side of the tree. And then, because it was an all day, he was talking about hunting all day. And then for the evening, because you always want your shots to be out here in front of you, kind of. You want them to be here so you can use the tree as a blocker. So what he did when he was gonna hunt in the evening, because he expected the deer to come from this direction in the evening, is he took and he let a little bit of lead out and he wrapped his, he, stood, he was on a platform, which I never would use a platform, but he wrapped his lead over his shoulder and now he's standing on the platform with his back against the tree. So now he's committing to a standing position, plus his body is on the same exact side of the tree as the deer would be coming from, which your odds of getting picked in a pressured area are really, really high on a mature deer. I don't care if it's a doe or a buck when your body's on the same side. So the way to do that, now he had to do it because he was hunting off a platform only. He didn't have any steps around the back side of the tree. So if you're gonna hunt an all day sit and you expect movements in the evening to be from that direction, you know, the opposite of what they're gonna be in the morning. He, he's expecting his morning direction you know, this way and his evening this way. It's really simple. When you put up your platform, put a couple extra step, put three or four extra steps around the back side of the tree. Whether it be a ring of strap-ons, or if you're on public land, a ring of strap-ons, or three or four individual Cranford strap-ons. And then all you have to do is walk around the tree to the other side, and then just take Loosen this up a little bit, slide it around, stand on your steps over here, and then snug it back up. So now you still have the tree as a blocker for the deer coming from that direction. There's absolutely no reason on earth to stay on the same side of the tree as the deer are coming in from. That is probably the best way of getting picked that I know of, because you got to make the motion of lifting your bow, going through your drawing position, moving right, moving, swinging around this way, whatever. You have to make motion. And I have a quick story. I had a friend 20 years ago, he was hunting public land and it was in December and he had a 
a two and a half year old eight point that he was after. There was about 16 inches of snow on the ground and that's back when you could bait. And he hunted out of a tree stand. Well, there was a swamp about 30 yards in front of him. He was in this massive white oak and he had a tree stand facing the bait. The bait was 15 yards out and then 15 yards farther was the edge of the swamp. And the first two hunts he hunted there, he had a mature doe come in with two fawns. The two fawns came right into the bait, but she knew that tree stand was there because he also hunted that before gun season and during gun season. So she knew that was there. So she never stuck her nose out beyond the edge of that swamp and the foliage is down so he could see him coming and he's sitting tight. He's sitting in his tree stand. His body is actually blocked because the tree's all behind him. But still, the doe stopped and she looked in the tree stand and she could see that he was there. And then she'd stomp the ground, snort and blow and then run off and the fawns would turn around and run off as well. So he told me about this. This is in Northern Michigan. And I said, you want me to kill it? I was pretty cocky and I was way too arrogant to do this, but I did it anyway. I said, would you like her dead? And he said, how are you gonna kill it if I can't? And this guy was a good hunter. He shot a lot of deer. And I said, that's not what I asked you. I said, do you want me to kill her? And he said, yeah, I'd like her out of there because there's no way I'm gonna kill that buck with that doe blowing every time, you know, because the buck's gonna come in right at dark if he comes in at all. So he said, yeah, you can give it a shot. So he took me over there the next day, like at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. I prepped the backside of that oak. So I, got, I climbed his apparatuses up to his stand, spun around the backside of the tree, got up another, I don't know, six feet, maybe four or six feet. So now I am sitting that evening, I hunted on the back side of that oak from the bait. The bait's over here. So when I said I never killed a deer over bait, I guess I was lying because I did shoot this doe on a bait pile. The bait's here, the swamp's there. I got the tree as a 100% blocker and I'm just peeking around the corner. So obviously I could hear the doe coming. She came right on cue. The two fawns came out, she stopped. I'm just peeking around the corner. She stopped and it took her five minutes looking into that tree. He wasn't there. She looked to the right, looked to the left, look at her fawns, twitch her tail. She'd look around, look at that tree again. And finally, after about five minutes, she walked right into that bait pile and it was a pile of sugar beets. And while she was coming in, and even when she reached down and was eating a couple beets, she was facing the tree. So her peripheral vision, if there had been somebody in that tree stand, would have still picked up a movement. So she was still very cautious, even though she visually could not see that guy in that tree stand. So I'm just peeking around the corner and after a few minutes, she got comfortable and she turned and she kind of quartered hard towards me. And I waited for her to put her head down and the fawns, they weren't really paying attention. They were just gorging themselves. And I just spun over to the side of the tree and shot her. And that was one of the cockiest moves I've ever made probably in my hunting career, but it was way cool because it worked. So keep the tree as a buffer. People don't Put the tree, don't be on the same side of the tree as the deer. Spinning around on a platform and shooting at deer. If you're in Iowa and Kansas and Missouri and non-pressured areas, suburba, suburbia or in you know parks with permits, low pressure areas, managed areas, you can get away with that stuff. If you're in a pressured area and you make that much movement on the same side of the tree as a deer, you are going to get picked. Maybe not 100% of the time, but well over 50% of the time if, there's a, if it's a mature deer. So anyway, this is called a girth hitch. Works way better than just a straight loop. Uh, very simple to do, and when you want to undo it, it's real easy. Just slide the rope out, undo the girth hitch, pull the rope back through. I'm gonna get up here and redo that when I'm actually setting up to do some uh, to show you some stuff. Okay, this is something I didn't mention when I was up in a tree, but uh, I'm on Tethered's pro staff team and uh, just wanted to let everybody know something about a rope man. This here is what comes with the lead rope and also with the lineman rope when you order anything from Tethered and probably from any other company actually, is you get a Prusik knot. And the Prusik knot is adjustable if you want to let some lead out or you want to shorten or lengthen your lead a little bit and sit in a little bit different position. With a Prusik knot, you have to lift your weight up 
and it, then you kind of have to move this thing around to make it slide. So it takes time to make it slide. Slide down or slide up. You just got to fidget with it to make it slide. And when you're in a hunting position and a deer's coming in at a certain spot and you want to let, let's say you got to go around to the backside of the tree where the tree is going to actually suck up some of your lead. So you need to lengthen your lead before you make that move. With a Prusik knot, it takes a little bit of time. Whereas, this here is a rope man. And this thing came from the rock climbing industry. And with a rope man, you can let out your lead or you know, let it out or bring it up really, really fast. If I want to if I want to raise my body a little bit, just lift on it like that. If I want to lower my body, just let a little bit out. So it's instant. And a lot of times when you just got a micro moment to make a movement because something's coming by fast, like a buck chasing a doe or something, you don't want to have to fidget with a Prusik knot. These are pricey. So I suggest anybody buying a saddle. I don't care what company saddle you buy. Uh, these are available on Tethered's website. I, I think they're like 45, 50 bucks, $55, I guess. And I definitely, I strongly recommend getting a rope, man, at least for your lead. Around your lineman rope, it's not that big a deal because you're just climbing the tree or you're prepping trees. You've got time to adjust the Prusik knot. It's not a big deal. But on your lead, it's nice just to have that really literally a half a second adjustment mobility uh, so you can move around the tree or just to adjust it so you sit differently so it adds to your overall comfort during a long sit. So again, Rope Man, awesome, awesome item. Strongly recommend anybody having one at least on their lead. Thanks for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and please like and subscribe.